Okay, so James and I wanted to look at some of his games, although we've been, you know, talking about the good old days. What FIDE title does Mr. Alltoucher have? I, I have, I'm a US NM. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like an NMA, but just mm -hmm. without the uh. Okay, that's good. I, didn't, I don't have any FIDE title. That makes sense. Okay, you were black this game, I think, against Dimitri. Yeah, so this was against Dimitri Gorovich. I think I was at this game. Oh, really? I think I saw you play this game. Yeah, I think you were at this tournament. It was in the mm -hmm. Chicago Open. We yeah. were in the Chicago Open two years ago. Yeah. Okay, so you're black. Yeah. Why do you play D6 before G6? Uh, that, that's a is good that, question. Is that a secret? You don't have to tell me. No, no, I, there's no reason. Is there, a, oh. is there a good reason to avoid it? No, most people play G6 first. I mean, I'm never going to play D5, so I just right. figure I'll play D6. <laughs> okay, I, usually people play, play G6 first. That way your opponent might think you're going to play D5. Scare them. Yeah. And so what would they do then to take advantage? No, a lot of time. No, nothing. Or, or, or Well, you just you have to play D6. You can avoid... You can, you can play G6, Bishop, G7, Castles, and not play D6 and play D6 later. I suppose there's some lines where maybe I would want to do C5 with no D6, like if it turns into kind of English. Yeah, that could happen. Especially if they play early Bishop F4, Bishop G5. Oh, yeah. Then you want to play C5 lines. Or if they do like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. But no, I mean, I just thought you had some specific reason. No. Okay. All right, so we have a King's Indian. So, by the way, before this game, mm -hmm. I was super nervous because I know what he plays as white against the King's Indian. It's a line named after himself mm -hmm. that he worked out with Korchnoi for one of the candidates' tournaments. Mm -hmm. and they had figured out this line in the 91 Mardell Plata. Mm -hmm. So I was really nervous. Yeah. That's important to be super nervous. Yes. Yeah. I was trying not to be like, I called my wife. She said, don't be nervous, but that mm -hmm. made me more nervous. <laughs> Wives have... Chess is the most fun you can have. That's the thing. Like, a lot of times I'll go away for a weekend to a tournament and I'll get home and my wife will be like, did you have fun? And I'm trying to explain, of course I did not have fun. Yeah. And now I have to work. Like, this is the worst. Like, I just put in a weekend not mm -hmm. having fun at chess and now I have to, like, do real Back stuff. Back to real life, yeah. I mean, it's not like that I... I love playing chess, but it's you could love it, but it's not necessarily fun to lose. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Isn't all toucher stranger than Spencer? Uh <laughs> hmm. You spelled isn't wrong, you spelled all toucher wrong, you typoed stronger. Man, it's truth hurts. <laughs> no, I think he meant stranger. Probably I'm I no, probably I think, some I think he meant stronger. No, I think Spencer, no, actually, he put stronger next in the next sentence. So, uh, Spencer, we play Blitz. He crushed me in Blitz. He's better than you in Blitz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does Spencer play a lot anymore? Like, what's his rating right now? No, he doesn't play in tournaments. Mm. We don't talk to Spencer anymore. No. So we haven't, yeah, we haven't talked to him in like a year. No. Why? Yeah. yeah. Why we, is we have, that? We have beef. Why you have beef? Uh, that's off stream stuff to talk about. It's off stream, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's off stream. Yeah, we. I mean, we haven't spoken to him in like a year. Oh my god, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. That's not never a good thing. Families never fight. <laughs> well, if it makes any sense, I don't talk to my two sisters. We haven't talked in years. How many years? Since my article about New York City, because they both wrote an article trashing me after that. Damn. So you don't talk to Seinfeld either. <laughs> I've. Uh, I don't talk to Seinfeld. Although I have pretended that he's. I wrote an article mm -hmm. with him praising my book. Right. Uh, I saw that. So that's funny that your sisters don't talk to you because so so I have a friend of Eve of Eve Friedman you probably know yeah yes yeah. um I guess he talks to his sisters I I guess but I'm not sure but his sisters are super MAGA like they're more MAGA than MAGA right so, like MAGA is too too liberal for them it's interesting in a family like how did they split like that yeah I don't know because right. Aviv's like a normal person uh -huh. and. They were like, Trump didn't lose the election, and he's the president, and they were making bets with the... This is when it happened. They were like, when it, come, when it comes time, Trump's going to be in the White House, and Trump's the actual president. You, that, that election was imaginary. And they bet. like He bet like a steak dinner or something. And I'm like, did they ever pay you? And he said, no, because they don't agree that Biden's the president now. They still think Trump's the president, and it's all a trick. We're being tricked. It's so insane because... There have been a lot of elections closer than that election. Yeah. And everything was just fine. Like Nixon Kennedy, Gore Bush, 
Okay, Gore Bush. There was a court battle, but still, at the end of the day, yeah, Gore just said, "All right, you're president." Yeah, yeah. and also Nixon there was Nixon contested it in court in 1960, mm -hmm. but just didn't publicly do it. So, yeah, also there was up. the there was the fake election like 150, 200 years ago, where they said, "Okay, you're the president." They made some deal. 1876, Hayes, maybe. Yeah, Ruth Reed Hayes yeah, versus Hayes. Samuel Tilden. Yeah, they said, "All right, you're president," and then you you'll get this. No, it was totally like a backroom deal. Yeah, Congress. right. Yeah. yeah. Tilden won the popular vote and the electoral vote mm -hmm. and somehow lost the presidency. Yeah. He could easily have claimed to be the president. Yeah. But he said he gave up. Yeah, I think he was even Speaker of the House at some point. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, they just went in the back room and said, Okay, you're the president. So, yeah. yeah, they made a, a deal on on um whatever it's called. Uh what's that period called? Reconstruction? Yeah, reconstruction. See, I'm I'm getting older. That's I, I was a history <laughs> major, but I was a history major. Now, I can't remember anything. Although I did know it was Hayes. Okay, so you played the, the, the Dmitry Gurevich variation. Yeah, well, I played the normal classical mm -hmm. Kings Indian, and he played the what's called the Margot. And you Platter. always play this? I always play this, yeah. Okay. And in this position, uh, what move would you, fa you say you face the most? Uh, B4. B4. That's B4 why you... is the modern, mm -hmm. like, like that's what Kramnik used to um, mm -hmm. destroy Kasparov with. B mm -hmm. Kramnik really made B4 the dangerous weapon here. Yeah, but I agree. But 91, though, it, with planning 93 and a quick C5 is the kind of the main, main line. And, and you still mm -hmm. see, like, like, Wesley So plays it with a very quick C5. Uh, so 91 is still common, but B4 is more common. Yeah, I used to play B4 a lot, and the only people who played B4 were me and Von Whaley. And then Kramnik started playing it. So yeah. I, but I, I was one of the, the pioneers of B4, you know, even though it was played like in the 50s. You know what's interesting with B4? So A5 is considered the common response. Mm -hmm. But Hikaro does Knight E8, which is not mm -hmm. considered as good. He's had some beautiful games against yeah. Elfen and Topolov. I've faced Knight E8. Yeah. yeah, but Knight E8 is considered not as good because you get the Knight G5 stuff in. Mm -hmm. But if people don't know why it's not as good, it's actually a super great line. So mm -hmm. I've, I've had some great wins with 98. Oh, so you play 98. Yeah, yeah, I sent yeah. you even a, a win I have with 98 against mm -hmm. the 2400. Okay, cool. Yeah, I faced I faced 98, 97, A5, 95. 97 is probably no good though. Yeah, I, I agree, yeah. Okay, so your opponent played 91. I played that in the 1994 US Championship against Boris Kryman. Oh yeah? And, and I won. And um, how did no he? Mean. Well, oh, you, oh, you played 91, and then your yeah. your idea is 93, B4, C5? No, you... I, I was going to play, like, I think I played Bishop B3, F3, the way they used to play, before you were born. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was in 94. I didn't, know, I didn't even know what they did then. Like, we didn't have computers then. There was a great book by Geller uh, on the King's Indian, and that was, like, mm -hmm. my Bible for the King's Indian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked that book until I realized it was Uri Geller who wrote the book. And I was like, Uri Geller? I don't want to buy that. Did I ever tell you I met uh, Uri Geller? And so... But the funny thing is 99% of the chat hasn't heard of Uri Geller. And 98% of the chat hasn't heard of F.M. Geller. So that's, <laughs> that's a tough chat. Well, Uri Geller, I don't know if you remember this if you read comic books, but he was even in a Daredevil comic where he's like melting tanks with oh, his yeah? psychic powers. No, that's funny. So but when I met Uri Geller, so he's a, considered a psychic, is a crazy guy. But he bent a spoon for me, mm -hmm. and he like did some other psychic stuff. But you could tell, you could kind of figure out how he was doing everything. Like mm -hmm. it was totally like a cheap trick. Yeah. So this guy said spoon X clam. Yeah, the spoon guy. I saw FM Geller at, at Capella Grande in like 1991 or 92. Man, he was old. And he had a positive record against Fisher. He's one of the few people who had a positive record against mm -hmm. Fisher. That's correct. F.M. Geller's nephew is a friend of mine. Man. Is he a chess player? Who would have thunk it? I met Rubenstein's son when I was in Belgium. Really? Sammy Rubenstein. Yeah. Did he play chess? Yeah, and he was old. I mean, wow. when I was living, in, this is when I was living in Belgium. So he ain't old anymore. He was like in his 80s. Wow. But, and so, and he's like, they were like, he was like 2000 rated, something like that. And Rubenstein had some mental issues, right? Mm -hmm. So I wonder how he got married and, you know, had a kid. Yeah. He was considered kind of a A lot of people guy. do that. Yeah. Who would you say is your favorite endgame player that you like to study? Because Rubenstein's often brought up. Endgame player? I don't know, maybe Karpov. Yeah. Carlson's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Karpov and Carlson are good. Okay, so you played Knight D7. So the idea is to keep an eye on C5, mm -hmm. but also get, get out of the way of the F5 pawn. 
in this position, Kasparov always played 97? Or I did think, he ever play 98? No, I think sometimes 98. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he played bishop e3. Yeah, this is all normal. Mm -hmm. This was probably a game with Kryman so far. Yeah, actually, I'm going to look that up now. I'm, I'm interested. I bet you, do you play, uh, Kryman play, play g5 against you? I mean, you're 1994. All I know is I won. Also, I, it looked like I was super checkmated. Like, you would have bet that I would have lost. And my king's running around, and I'm up material. And I used to calculate pretty well. This is the one thing I don't like about the King's Indian as I get older, is that it's very stressful. That's correct. Like, what... Get, like, Fedora Works was trying to tell me, just play the Tartakower in the Queen's Gambit. It's not so stressful. Mm hmm I don't know. It feels stressful having, like, kind of a flat game, too. Is this, is this uh, right so far? Yeah. Yeah. This is your game? Yeah, then G5. Okay. Yeah, this is my game with... Man, my king was running around. It was great. Yeah, and you played... Oh, you played A4. Okay. That was my prep for the game. Yeah. A4 is still kind of <clears throat> common. He played knight B5. So this is particularly now... Mm-hmm. Gurevich Korchnoi with knight B5. Yeah. This is their line. Like, it's literally, like, named after them. Okay, so look at my, look at my game, which they can't look at, which is good. Yeah, so A4, A5. Yeah, it's a very similar idea, which is you're going for that pawn. You're, you're mm -hmm. going for the pawn A7, but really what you're trying to do is, is uh, exchange the bishop. Mm -hmm. So that white squared bishop's critical. Oh, so he's... So white, you're crushing him. No, no, but watch this attack he gets. He chases yeah, but my king but you have the out. squares. Mm -hmm. Okay, but... Yay, oh, F3 good. winning. That's that F3. Mm -hmm. Okay, but look how stressful this was. Yeah. Like, to calculate this, you would lo you lose years of your life right now. Right. Like, if you could see this game Ben played, that was by... That, that you must have been sick after that, like, physically sick. You know, like, I your, was... Your rook is pinned I, it was, against... It was in 1994. The queen and the king by the bishop. I, I can show them, too. Yeah. Let's see. Let's, Let's see that game. add games. The the chat gets impressed with that when I do like really stupid stuff, right? Like if I play blindfold, they're like, "How do you play blindfold?" Okay, so when I say like this is like my game with Boris Kreiman from '94, like how do you know a game you played in 1994? Like they can't understand. I can't understand it either, but I do. Okay, so this is this is um, the game we were just looking at. Except this is my game with Kryman from 1994. And what move is this right now? This is move 13 for white. So 13 moves is like totally book. Mm -hmm. And you did A4, Gurevich did knight B5. Right, Gurevich played knight B5 against, with against James. With almost the same idea. Right. And this is my game with Kryman from 1994. And then he mated me and I won on the queen side. And then he didn't mate me, so I won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won the exchange. Look at me. But then I like, I like the way I played HG. That looks like the most dangerous move ever. Yeah, particularly since you still have H3 because he can. Yeah, set. Well, I like that. I played, I played HG and F4. I want to see what the engine says about this. So I've probably never engined this game. So the idea, just for the chat, the idea is White's invading on the queen side, obviously, and Black's trying to checkmate, and the, everything hinges on that White squared bishop for Black. So Ben, you were trying to get by do, by knight a seven. You were not just winning a pawn. You were trying to get that bishop on c eight. Yeah, this line's too complicated for you, Bonarici. It would take hours to explain why you can't take the knight. Um, yeah, hg is bad. Now I'm just better. F four is bad. Oh, queen g five is a blunder. He needs to play knight g six. And then what? Yeah, rook takes f eight. It's winning the move I played because his knight's defending his bishop. And all this is just uh, is just fluff. It's all fluff. Yeah, yeah, because you have the squares. Yeah, no, because Karen was talking about fluff. Before. That's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe, though, okay. Instead of checking, what if you had done bishop g4 attacking your uh, queen first? In this position? Yeah. Because now you take that bishop, square away. Bishop g8 check. Well, queen d8's the, the obvious move. Because uh, that yeah, stops yeah, queen yeah, h4. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, bishop. Oh, you know, you don't have bishop f6. Either you're here. Black's lost. Yeah, so he played check, 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 check. Now I have to play rook f3. If I play anything else, I'm lost. So, okay, just do put the rook on f3. This is why the king's Indian is stressful. There's a bishop, rook, king, and queen all on the same diagonal. Mm -hmm. That's why the king's Indian yeah, is stressful. Yeah, and if, if I don't play rook f3, I'm lost. Knight f3 plus 1,000 for black. 
Why is that? Queen takes G2, oh, and yeah, then yeah. Bishop takes F8. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I must have saw this when I played, like, where it yeah. takes F8. Is Queen D3 the only move where everything wins? Ooh, Queen D3 is by far the best move. Get D1 for my king. So this is, like, not a positional game. No. Now he I, resigned because he's getting it's mated. It's just over. Wait, I have a quicker mate here? Queen E8 mate is quicker. I played Queen D8. Terrible. Then he resigned. Yeah, resigning is a good idea. Well, well this is move. This is what, move forty-one. This is in the U.S. Championship. Yeah. What score did you get? Uh, four and a half out of thirteen. My first U.S. Championship. Who who won that year? Uh, Golko. Mm. Then the second year I played was ninety-nine, and Golko won. And he didn't win any other ones. Just the ones um, I played. The first two I played. He in. called up in advance. Like, is, yeah. is Ben playing? Is yeah. Ben Feingold and, playing? And he actually came in last the year before I played in both of them. Huh. And then when I played, he came in first. You were kind of his inspiration. Mm -hmm. He has like a zombie doll of you like on his night table. Exactly. How did you know all that stuff? Well, Boris and I talk about you all the time. Boris Kreiman or Boris Golko? Golko. Okay. Is he still alive? That's a good question. Is. I think he is I still think alive. he is, yeah. He just doesn't play. Okay, so now we'll get back to your game after that detour. But that shows how stressful these games are. And mm -hmm. this is a game I'm going to lose, but it got weird. Okay, so you played B6. Okay, yeah, which is the move against knight b5. Not against a4, but against knight b5. Mm -hmm. Against a4, you would just do a5. Okay. And he played b4. He's trying to get c5 in. I push the knight back. Now, rook f6 is not the move. This is what I decided to do against, specifically in against this line against Gorovich. Mm -hmm. So the idea is rook f6, rook h6, queen e8, uh, sac the knight on d7, and then sack the bishop on h3 and checkmate. Mm -hmm. And Gurevich is aware of this, but he, from rook f6 on, he has to do the right four moves, which is knight d3, bishop f2, knight f2, e th h3, and that's mm -hmm. how he protects everything. Yeah, bishop b1, but who's counting? Yeah, yeah, yeah bishop b1, then knight f2, and then h3. So so that's why the, the it, you'll see in the database, people play rook h6, mm -hmm. but I only played rook g6 because I know he's going to do this, Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to waste the tempo on rook h6. I'm bringing it back to rook g6 to support g5. G4. Yeah, g4. Uh -huh. Okay, so bishop e1. Yeah, so that, the reason I put a question mark on, in my own analysis is that he's assuming I did rook h6, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming he's going to do the already the protective setup. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't do rook h6, and I saved the so tempo. So you did good. Yeah, right now I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what the computer says. But yeah, it I, says you're I, doing well. Okay, which yeah. is which is odd for a king's Indian on the black side. Exactly. Yeah. And so now my idea is I'm gonna do I'm gonna move the king. I'm gonna do knight d7, g8, h6, and then g4. Finally, getting g4 mm -hmm. in. And there's the no engine way for... seems to prefer this slightly with the same idea. I wonder why. Why do you think it would I revert? I don't know. Maybe because just king's closer to the center. If we get into an end game. I don't know. Okay. That doesn't seem like a good reason. Maybe because you have h8 for your queen and rook. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. No, that's a good point. I think this was my problem, is that the whole game I just had one plan, whereas the computer's idea there was more flexible. Yeah, computer says you're doing great. Yeah, because he, he technically can't start, stop g4. Mm -hmm. And then he, he even he knows he's going to lose, which is why he did an amazing move right here, which is not a good move, but it was an amazing move. It was the winning move, even though it's a losing move. Mm-hmm. Well said. There you go. Yeah, my friend Wes Berger, who was a chess master before you were born, he said, the reason I'm good at chess is because I make good, bad moves. And this is what he meant. Well, he, that, he meant, he meant what, what you just said. So, so that's a skill. Like, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Like, people will see what his next move is. It's, it was amazing to me, particularly after the game, not mm -hmm. during the game. Do you remember the game Spassky was losing strategically and he played knight c6 with a pawn on d5, just no. hanging his knight? No. Yeah, and he drew and like, no no computer, like, but the move makes the game all messy. And so he was down a piece and he drew against like Super Grandmaster in Soviet Union. Like like here, the computer has it at what, like negative two or negative three? Mm -hmm. Like it was specifically not a good move. Mm -hmm. But so Dimitri told me afterwards, he said, I knew I was going to get into a losing position, but I figured the loss would be an extra 30 moves, and that mm -hmm. gives me 30 more moves to try to confuse you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that blocks up. This is very similar to Spassky's knight c6. 
Like, yeah. And so my mis you'll see what my mistake is. Or let you'll me tell see, me what let my me mistake see if is. I can find that. Yeah, uh, I would like to see that. Spassky. Like the art of making good, bad six. moves seems like a good thing to learn. Wow, I did Spassky, Knight C6, and it says Averbach Spassky. Knight odds. Right, but I think he just gave his knight away. Yeah. I think this is the game. Yeah. Yeah, this position, Black's just losing. A similar kind so, of position. So Black played knight C, so Spassky played knight C6. That's interesting. And so what... Because he can't move, so he just had to give his knight away. Yeah, he, could, he couldn't do knight D7 there? He could, but what is he going to do? What's his plan? Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's just all bottled up. And so here, at least, he gets a massive pawns in this. Well, it's very similar to what you said. Man, I hate this stupid whatever this is. I'll show them on the thing. Yeah. Everything that you tells me reminds me of something else. That's good, though. That's mm -hmm. uh, I'm seeing all these games. Let's see. Games. I, I like this idea of the, the art of making good, bad moves. Mm hmm And my, my chat, they just make bad, bad moves. I'm sure, okay. I'm sure you guys make good moves. So, no. <laughs> okay, so this position is Averbach Spassky from 1956, Soviet Championship. And the engine says white's up like plus three here. And it's even material. And what? And this looks like a King's Indian. It was a King's Indian also. Yes. Yeah, and like Black can't move anything. Black has no plan. Yeah. So Spassky played Knight C6. Wow. Nice, so, nice Knight can go here. Yeah, so he has to take. Mm -hmm. And then the game ended in a 75 move draw. Well, now the Knight has E6. Man, Black's never been so happy to lose a piece. Yeah, so yeah it's, it's very also, similar to what Dimitri did. Right, so what made this... Bad move, good. Okay, it gave that knight a job. It gave the other knight a job, so that knight's going to d4. Yeah, my rook has the b-file. It gave the rook the b-file. Stop knight d5. It yeah, put an extra five. pawn in the center, and it mm -hmm. won a pawn. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if the knight go, uh, goes to e6, d4, and then he takes the knight, then he's, black has a protected No, I mean, if pawn. black had another piece here, he'd be better, because I have knight e6 to d4. So my position's pretty good now, except for I'm down a piece. But it's still, the computer has a plus three. Right. But Spassky didn't lose somehow. Man, look at Spassky's knight on D. Yeah, he's just losing the whole game, but he didn't lose. Man. Complicated. Look, he's giving up another piece? I don't get it. No, no, he just, they uh, traded. He right. took on G6. Wow, he, he drew this piece down endgame. D5? Yeah, just to even out the pawns. Or he's going to do D4. Yeah, Black's position is pretty good, except he's down a piece. Yeah, white, the computer still has white winning. Yeah, well, white's up a piece. But I'd be afraid of those center pawns, though. Yeah. No, but I mean, how could Spassky find knight c6? Yeah. He's that, probably not used to getting positionally crushed. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And the game ended in a draw here, much later. With Spassky up the exchange. White was lucky to draw. Wow. Amazing. What year was this? 56. So Spassky wasn't even on the radar as a potential world champion. Well, this yet. was the Soviet championship, so he's uh, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And Averbach was 100 years old in 56. <laughs> That's how old he is. I saw Averbach when I was at, in the Soviet Union, well, in Russia, actually, in 2011 at the Tall Memorial with, with uh, Nakamura. Yeah. I, I was his coach. Was he playing? No, he was watching. Wait, you were Nakamura's coach? Yes. He, he, I, I didn't he, know you were Nakamura's he, he, coach. He came in last. I was a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tournament where he fired Kasparov. Really? Mm -hmm. Why did he fire Kasparov? You know, they didn't they didn't get along. I thought they did get along. I didn't know that. They didn't get along then. They might get along now. They don't what, work together. What was their issue? They, you know, wouldn't... They needed a secretary. The big, big uh, you know, egos. So mm -hmm. they wouldn't collaborate well. Like, what's an, what's an example situation where... You know, like, agreeing? one of them has to contact the other about what to do, so they wouldn't. Because that's his job, is to contact me, we both would think. Because they both play, like, for instance, the King's Indians. So, like, would they mm -hmm. ever have a disagreement on what line was the best? No, no, or? they would have a disagreement about who would, who would call who about setting up a lesson time. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm not calling Kasparov. He calls me and vice versa. Did Kasparov give Nakamura, like, a lot of work, like, a lot of homework and I stuff? I think they did a lot of work when he won a Tata Steel in 2011. And I think after that, they didn't do very much. And what kind? Would they do opening work, calculation oh, work? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And what work would you do coaching Nakamura? We just looked at openings. Yeah, he didn't... He, he, he came to the tournament too soon to the tournament with the time change. Mm -hmm. We got to like the day before the tournament. 
which I suggested we not do. And he says, no, no, I'm a warrior. I mean, there was, yeah, they, his behavior during the tournament wasn't good either. He was having problems with Kasparov. So he, mm. was, he wasn't in a good mood. And Kasparov had that much of an effect on his, yeah. on his mood. Yeah. But like, again, like, what, what did, they, did they ever disagree on chess things? Like, uh, was. I don't know. I played some practice games with Akaru where he played blindfold and I didn't. Because mm -hmm. he was playing in a blindfold term, Melody Amber, when it still yeah. existed. And he would play me, our game would end, and he would go call Kasparov, and Kasparov would yell at him. Then we, would, we kept doing that. So he won the first game, and we drew the next three. And then Kasparov would just yell at him after every game. It's like, what do you, why would you play like that? And you draw Ben Feingold, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Wow, so in A, it's imp again, it shows the importance of mindset. But B, I'm curious what he disagreed with in Hakaro's play. Because they do seem to have similar styles. Or yeah. play similar No, openings. I think when they worked together and they had a good working relationship, but I think after that, when they had to like figure out a work schedule and what to do, that's mm. they needed some they needed a facilitator. Mm. They didn't have one. Yeah, Naka did beat Fabi today. Evil beats good. And and do you feel your game improved coaching while you were No, I just her? coached him the one tournament. Okay. No, I probably got worse. That was an exciting tournament. That tournament in 2011 had Carlson, Anand, Kramnik, Nakamura, Nipom Nishi, and these are the weak players. I didn't get to the good players yet. Okay, Svidler, uh, Gelfand. And anyway, at the end of the tournament, Anand and Gelfand signed the contracts for the World Championship in 2012. I saw them in the lobby beforehand. They're pretty good friends. And... Uh, at this tournament, Anand had nine draws out of nine games. Wow. Carlson tied for first by doing the following. Carlson won the first game, drew his next seven, and then won the last round, tying for first. Huh. Jan Nipomnishi was the lowest rated player, and everybody thought he'd come in last, and he tied for second. Huh. He had like one win and eight draws, and he was like had good positions against everybody. Those were the days. And even though Carlson wasn't world champion then, he was the highest rated player in the world, right? I think so. And the craziest game of the tournament, if you guys can look this up, I could look it up, but that would waste valuable seconds. This is the craziest game I've ever seen. It, Kramnik is playing Carlson, and the game looks like total nonsense. The game looks like a one-minute game played like by beginners. And then somehow the game ended in a draw when it looked like one of them was just completely winning. But they ended up drawing the game. I wonder why. No, I mean, when the game ended and the draw was drawn, but I don't know how they, how they got uh, there. That was a totally insane game. Kramnik Carlson, Tall Memorial 2011. Did you memorize that game? I have not. <laughs> hey, James Altucher, love your Quora answers. Oh, thank you very much. I, I used to spend a lot of time on Quora, and I, I became like the, the third most followed person there. And then, I don't know, I just... Out of what, Three? Uh, no, they've like they've got like millions. They've like two hundred million people on Quora. But, but that ruins my joke. <laughs> it's still a funny joke, and uh, but I just I got kind of I started playing chess more, and I got I lost interest in social media. Mm -hmm. So just stopped doing it. I think it was because I got all my sisters writing articles against me. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll do it. Who trusts Quora? I don't know who trusts it. Somebody has to trust it. You gotta, it's it's answer by answer. You know, you gotta just decide because there's a lot of like bad stuff going on Quora right now. This is a long time ago I was on Quora. But my answers still get like, you know, a couple hundred thousand views a month there. I used to love Quora too. Yeah, there's a lot of Chinese bots apparently on Quora. I don't know. There's a lot of, and they don't do a lot of moderation. I don't even know how Quora is monetized. I haven't been on Quora in years really. Yeah, standards lowered. They stopped incentivizing like the top Quora writers. Not with money, but just calling us top Quora writers and giving us a jacket every year was enough. I don't know if Quora really has an official link to the Chinese government. I mean, TikTok does, but not... And Zoom does, but uh, not Quora, I don't think. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Who needs Chinese bots when there's an uneducated public with opinions? Crazy game, Kramnik Carlson 2011. That is correct. I'll have to check that out. All I remember was it was crazy. Like, I'm like, this can't be chess. This isn't chess. You know, and it's weird because back then, Carlson was younger than 
Anand and Galfand. He mm -hmm. was also the highest rated player in the world. So Anand would play um, like, you know, matches, you know, fun matches with Carlson, like blitz matches mm -hmm. with Carlson just to prepare for his world championships. Mm -hmm. Those were the days. So, so here, from here, I lose. Okay, yeah, that so happens. That, so I mean, Spassky, I want, Spassky drew. So, so I want to figure out like how to avoid losing in winning positions like this. So, how surprised were you at this move? I was very surprised because I thought I was going to have G four and just win. Mm -hmm. And so, I think my problem was I kept a mindset that I ha I have to just still I'm going to win a piece and then I'm and then I'm going to mate him. Mm -hmm. And that was the wrong mindset. Like, I'm going to win a piece and I'm winning, but then I had to consolidate and I didn't realize that. So I just screwed myself. Yeah, the engine is actually sacking on G4. Wow. The engine made the knight? No, after after you take. Oh, he played FG. Ah. Yeah, if he plays HG, the engine was, was playing knight takes. Yeah, because then I get the H file. Yeah. And then I still mate. His whole goal was to make me not mate. Mm -hmm. And he's got the C file. And I'm like, look at where all my pieces are. Mm -hmm. They're all trying to mate, but there's no mate anymore. <laughs> and I can't even do like F4, F3 and put a knight there because mm -hmm. there's no way for my knight to get right. around. Like my knights right. are just in bad positions now. Mm -hmm. They were in great positions for a microsecond. And now I have to reorganize. I didn't understand how to do that. Double question mark. Did you write that? Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> I mean, I, I was just annoyed that moves, myself. That moves dubious at best. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Well, what would you do right here? What would you be your first move? To, what would be your thoughts right here? So this was the critical point where I had to think I don't know. I, I would think I'm a piece up, so I would like go to the C file. Yeah, and I did not think that. I would put both of my rooks on the C file. So like, what move would you make first? Like bishop D7? Bishop F8, rook G7, rook C7, bishop D7, or B7, rook C8. And then is it straightforward win? I mean, I'm up a piece, and then I, it's not straightforward. I have to get my knight. I have to get all my pieces to good squares. So, so my problem is I didn't think that way and I don't know why I didn't think that way. So I, when you I, played knight here, were you going to go here, here, and here? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, right. I mean, he has the C file. So it's like the game uh, Karpov-Komsky 1992, one of my favorite games, where black has the C file and then white takes over the C file because white was already winning on the king side. Yeah, look at look up that game. It was an ex exchange Grunfeld where they both played the Grunfeld somehow. Like knight f three g three and yeah, so Karpov Kamsky, what year? Ninety two. Ninety two. And then and then Karpov won on the king's side. He had this bind. Then on the queen's side, Black had the c file, and he, Karpov just took the c file. I don't know how he did it. I still don't know. James Altucher was the Cora guy. James New is the chess guy. What? James Nutcher. Nutcher. What? I, I don't understand the jokes. Okay, so let's have a look. Yeah, so this person's right too. He says the same thing as you. I would be thinking of getting that rook off g6 immediately with knight f8 and then rook, mm -hmm. rook g7. Right, knight g8, bishop f3. Bishop f8's okay. See, but then I'm doing this. Yeah, I don't understand that. I'm like looking at... I'm, I'm, I'm looking at sacrifices somehow. <laughs> like there's no point. So yeah, just like rook g7, rook c7. Yeah. And I did not once consider that. Well, he's going to take the C file, so you want to fight. And then yeah. you're up a piece. I don't even understand what sacrifices you're talking about. Yeah, I don't even know myself what? at this point. What? So your, your moves are, are fine. You're giving question marks. So you didn't do anything wrong. Well, I'm thinking of putting my bishop on G6, which is the, that's why I did bishop D7. When mm -hmm. I should have put my bishop on B7, probably. Yeah, you don't want to play A5. You like, you'd like to take so your rook is more active. That just kills your rook. Yeah, and also he has potential for a uh, sack on a5 and get those pawns mm -hmm. moving. Like yeah, but I mean a5 there. just kills your rook. Yeah. It's probably better to ignore b5 and just play rook h7 or something. Or maybe just pawn. Maybe would you do pawn takes and then? If I, I, I would consider pawn takes, but I wouldn't even consider a5. I wouldn't even yeah. think of that. So again, you're, you're you're making your rook inactive. So like, I'm just trying to figure out like. There's there's the flaws in the chest, but there's also the flaws in the way I was thinking. Like like why was I even thinking a five? I I mean I know that's a hard question to answer why I was thinking something, but okay, he played knight b one. Like maybe I thought I was closing things up. Okay, now you went crazy. Oh no, you didn't go crazy. You were saying you should have gone crazy. My 
goal is to get the bishop to g6 and then sack. Yeah, which is crazy. And I would never sack anything. Yeah, because the whole idea is I don't need to sack. I'm already winning. Right. Bishop g7. Like now my rook, how many moves is it going to take for my rook to get back into the game? Boy, after bishop here, it says white's better. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a rook down, essentially. Yeah, it says rook c6 is good, sacking the exchange. Always sack the exchange. Rook c7 is also good. Now he's just coming in. Look at my two rooks. They're mm -hmm. just like little babies. So I thought I kind of like was blocking his rooks in. Mm -hmm. No, the engine still likes your position. But it's hard for you to break through and do anything. Yeah, and he has all sorts of sack potentials. Mm -hmm. Look at this. His pieces are just like coming in. I'm surprised the engine still likes it. Still likes your position. Whoa. It doesn't like that move at all. Yeah, it says that loses. It says you should play DC. Finally getting your rook to do something. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that would who, put my... who would have thunk it? That would I mean, you should never, should never lose for one reason. Like, this bishop is dead. Ah. I mean, what's that bishop doing? See, I didn't go piece by piece and think that. Yeah, you're up, you're, you're up a piece, and this piece is dead. Yeah. So you shouldn't lose. Okay, but now you're you're hooking him up here. Yeah, you can't play DC because your queen's hanging. It's yeah. a it's a marvel you can't play DC. <laughs> okay, he got it. That was good. I made that joke. That before. was well done. Thank you. Okay, so you played BC, or as we call it now, BCE, yeah. to be politically correct. <laughs> Queen A five. Yeah, now he's got three connected pass pawns. Yeah, I'm like losing here. Yeah, you are losing. It says. Horrible. You also, I don't think you played that badly, and you shouldn't be so upset about, like, what happened. Sometimes in chess you lose, because you make mistakes. But, like, I feel like it was not, it was, like, faults in my thinking. Like, I missed critical aspects of what's important to play good chess. Like, I put my yeah, rook on age 6 and you're, 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 you're supposed to do that. You're not a super grandmaster. You're supposed to make mistakes. How, how am I supposed to beat you if you don't make mistakes? <laughs> Like here I had a, a good thing going on, and I, I think a key thing is I kept trying to to mate instead of just consolidate. Like they mm -hmm. always teach you how to win-win positions. But you, you, you broke through in the king's side. No, no. no. <laughs> and now I'm just like, just I could resign. Did I, you I, resign I did resign. Here? I did resign. Yeah, you wrote, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so like for future games... I have to just kind of, I have to know when to change. There's no my... reason to be single-minded. If you're trying to mate somebody and they give away your queen and rook, you can change up what you're doing. Yeah. You have, every move you change up what you're doing. Like you try to do something, usually your opponent stops it or you decide not to do it because it doesn't work anymore. You do something else. But if you're just, you know, if you have tunnel vision, then you can't win because you're only doing one thing. Chess is complicated. It's almost like with the King's Indian, you, you, you're... you you're lulled into thinking there's only one valid strategy for black, which is mm -hmm. checkmate. But I sort of achieved the dream, and then... Yeah, your opponent gave a piece away to not get checkmated. And then you were up a piece. Now you yeah. can win up a piece. And I just didn't think that at all. I did not once think, go to the C-file, trade rooks. That would have just been very straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I have to learn to um, change modes. Yeah, but the King's Indian's hard. That's it a is. tough opening. But yeah, it reminded me of when Spassky played knight c6 for like no reason because his game yeah. sucked. So he's like, all right, let's unsuck it. I wonder if Gurvich was even thinking something like that. He's I'm sure he knows the game too. Yeah. yeah. I was really surprised when he did that knight g4 move. Yeah. That was not I'll bet you Averbach was surprised at knight c6. Yeah. It's like, there's a move Spassky won't play. And they were like, what? I just take it. Yeah, the truth hurts. Chess is easier when you're an engine. When you're a human, it's hard. Donating ELO is a noble endeavor. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Dmitry Gorovich needed my ELO. Or well maybe he did. It was Man, like in he, the twenty three hundred. He, he needs today. a lot of ELO. Yeah. <laughs> my first wife, her boyfriend before me was Dmitry Gorovich. Really? They actually lived together on and off for seven years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He even came over once when I lived with my, she was my girlfriend at the time, and we all played Blitz. Huh. How'd you do against him? Uh, I think I was doing okay. He's better than me then. Long time ago, 
before you were born and you're older than me. Man. 